There is no doubt that the government has a massive task to carry through in the coming months. Although nobody is denying this, the government has often been criticized for its lack of transparency and its tendency to deny the displaced, the general public and the media the right to adequate information about the real conditions in the camps and also resettlement procedures. For those still in the camps who have suffered so much already, their ordeal seems far from over. I spoke with Dr. Vinya Aryaratna, head of Sarvodaya, one of the largest local humanitarian organizations in the country, to find out his views on the ground situation. Uh, your organization, Sarvodaya, has been one that has had um, access to the camp steadily at a time when access is quite hard to come by. Um, can you give me an idea of the ground situation as it stands right now? Yes, actually the Sarvodaya uh, activities uh, were quite uh, easy to start at the beginning because we already had a presence in the area because we have been engaged in various development and relief activities even before the displacement took place in Vaunia. So therefore it was not a matter of we having access after the event but we just extended our normal services to respond to an emergency situation. At the moment we are serving uh, about 60,000 people out of this 240,000 odd IDPs who are in the Manic Farm. In terms of the conditions you uh, can't give one straight answer whether the conditions are good or bad. It depends on the, uh, the zone that you are looking at. There are uh, zones which have been set up from January which have better facilities and conform to international humanitarian standards. Then there are other zones because of the sheer numbers the services are not still up to the standard. For example, the uh, ratio of toilets to number of individuals is still not up to the mark. We need about 15,000 toilets, but we only have about 10,000 at the moment. So there are serious deficiencies. Then also uh, with the current uh, uh, expectations of the, the rains coming, then uh, the preparedness is still uh, inadequate. So uh, we are facing uh, great challenges. Uh, so the, the facilities and the services range from quite sat satisfactory to uh, quite uh, unsatisfactory. So there have been several pressing needs that aid workers have identified. Some say that uh, congestion is the worst problem. Uh, others say that the conditions in the camps generally have to be improved. In your opinion, what is the most urgent pressing problem at the moment? The basic needs are being met. The quality of those services have to be improved, no question about it. But I think the large numbers, even with um, so much work done by the government and humanitarian organizations, it's just not possible to maintain high quality services for this number of people. So uh, decongestion is important. People have to move out to smaller camps or to go back to their original places of residence. That has to happen. But there are other uh, pressing uh, needs. For example, still the family reunification process is slow. So we, we can attend to these problems because these are very humane uh, things and urgent in terms of the emotional and uh, psychological well-being of the people. So of course efforts are uh, there uh, by the government and various organizations to reunite families or identify where their uh, family, other family members are because they are scattered all over. Some are in hospital. Is it happening fast enough? Uh, no, I think it can be improved very much. I think this is an urgent need that has to uh, happen. Uh, and also even if you cannot reunite, at least sharing of the information makes a big difference. If they know that you know their relations are in this, this hospital or in this camp, that will make a difference. Then I think it's also fair by the people if they know what is the general time frame that they can go back to their homes. So the government has come up with a 180 day plan mm -hmm. and things are happening and I hope that process gets expedited and the people, they have a right to know. Okay, but now the government has uh, to deal with this massive task of resettlement and according to the government, they have to um, balance these two concerns, the defense concern and the humanitarian concern. And these two usually clash because um, um, restriction of movement, that's all because of uh, security reasons. 
Um, how do you think this should be handled or balanced in a more... Um, Yes, I think there are ways of balancing. I, I, I think the, 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 there are genuine concerns because we have also uh, witnessed ourselves that there are elements who have really been uh, uh, very sort of uh, detrimental to the well-being of the people who have uh, probably done atrocities in the past to civilians. So, so there is a security element there. But I think that can be expedited if that process is made transparent. This is what is happening and this is how the judicial process is taking place. So we know that you know certain individuals are identified and detained and they are in camps and once the judicial process takes place, it's a very, uh, very legal within the law process. Uh, but uh, that has to be uh, expedited because uh, you can't just say that you know security delays uh, things uh, indefinitely. So now the government has uh, planned to resettle thousands within the coming weeks. Do you know anything about this program, how it's progressing? Yes, uh, the uh, government has identified certain areas where people can uh, move without much difficulty, where landmine problem is not there, where uh, people have uh, been living until very recent times, where uh, they, they are confident of the infrastructure support and security and so on. So we are made to understand that people have been now resettled in areas in uh, MANA, we know and we are also involved in that process. In Jaffna, uh, people have been moved, I, I, we don't know exactly the areas and the numbers, but uh, altogether, also in the eastern province, people have been sent back. Uh, so altogether about 20,000 to 30,000 people are being settled right now. But uh, I believe that within the next few weeks, before the rain starts, at least 100,000 people have to be uh, moved out, not necessarily resettled, but relocated. Do you in see order that happening? Uh, I think there is a commitment, uh, but uh, we have to wait and see how fast it happens uh, because it will be impossible for us to provide the services to such a large number when the monsoon rains come. Okay. And finally, um, what do you think people in the south can do? Because it's not only the government's responsibility, it's not only humanitarian workers' responsibility. What do you think people in the south can do to, to help yeah. these people? Uh, we are a caring nation, but right now the unfortunate thing is people don't get news about what's really happening. Sometimes for various reasons, news are getting manipulated by various uh, parties uh, for their own vested interests. But I think if the people know uh, uh, what the real situation, then they will find on their own ways to connect with these people. I think the government also has to exploit this goodwill of the people in the South, create uh, opportunities, create avenues for that concern and compassion uh, for the people in the south to connect with the people in the north, particularly those who are in the IDP camps. And Sarvodh is uh, doing uh, through its own uh, uh, mechanisms, but it can be scaled up. That way I think we can uh, lay a very strong foundation for reconciliation, because that's the only way that we can move forward as, a, as, a, as one country. Although Dr. Arya Ratna admits that the government has only been able to resettle around 30,000 people so far. He still hopes to see 100,000 civilians relocated within the next month or so. With the impending monsoons clouding the horizon, he believes that now is the time to act. We're going in for a break right now, but when we return, we move on to the question of inclusion and how Information Communication Technology, or ICT, can provide answers.